That's all you want to do is plug in and suck it up. Hi, I'm Robin Clevett. Welcome to Skill Builder. And I'm Roger Bisbee, and we're looking at a cordless Festool track. We are. It is the TSC 55 REB Plus. Now, this is forming part of our overall roundup of all the different track saws. I was going to say a Festool roundup, but it's everybody's. We've got different makes. We borrowed this machine. We got this from someone. It's, you can see that it's not new. This is obviously cordless. It's working on two 18 volt batteries. Now, when I first looked at this machine, I thought, hang on a minute, how can it work on just one battery? That gives you 18 volt. And I thought, perhaps it's just an 18 volt machine and they've wired those up in yeah. parallel. But actually, no, what it does is if you put both in, it increases the power to 36 volts. So if you're running on 18 volts, which you can do, if you're just cutting through a sheet, single sheet of MDF, you're probably gonna do it, it's probably okay, but it's a little bit slower. And if you put it onto full power with a 36 volt, it will obviously run faster. And then it's comparable with uh, machines like the Makita. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, so that's good. you can run through the features. Sorry okay. to interrupt you. No, not this at all. The, that's the splinter guard. That's the little splinter yeah. guard in there, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so um, this is really, really similar. In fact, apart from the fact that it's battery powered, it's almost the same as the TSC 55REQ, which is the corded version, uh, 110 or 240. Um, so basically you've got the, um, all the nice functions and features, the easy blade change, you've got the Allen key, you know, hidden away. And Festival again, so everything green is a function. You've also got the fact that it allows for the rail on or rail off by these two little sliders on here. Fine adjustment here for if you want to really be precise about the blade and the contact, if the blade's a little bit worn or we've got a slightly different blade in there. If um, you've had it sharpened. Or you've well. had it sharpened yeah, yeah. as well. It'll do your minus one degree cut really simply. You click, you loosen off your bevel knobs here, you slot that one over, you pull this one out and you're on minus one degree for a scribe, you know, when you're relieving the rear edge of something, a panel, really easy, really simple. Um, what more can I say about it, if you're familiar with the saw? Well, I think you've got to show the blade change because we've got to remember that yeah. people may not have seen our other videos. So, so, so just show how you would change a blade on so it. So a si simple blade change. So all that is when you first pick this up, you think, what does this do? What's fast fix? What that actually means is you set it to a full depth, you pull up this and you just push down and it clicks. And what that's done is locked everything to expose the blade. Obviously we're unplugged, we've got no batteries, we're quite safe. It's exposed the blade. You can set it on there while you're holding it. You can take your Allen key remove the blade. So that's and locked, that go. blade. So even, locked, yeah. even if it was plugged in, you wouldn't actually be able to start the machine up. Sorry, plugged in if you've got the batteries in. Exactly. You still wouldn't be able to start the machine up anyway. Exactly. But we always say, take the batteries out. Whatever you're doing, take the batteries out. You've got the old retractable Yeah, retractable driving knife, knife, which is a nice feature as well, enabling you to cut and use it like a riving knife or plunge cut as well. So that's always a nice feature. Um, other sort of standard things. I'm just going to release this. Remember to hang on to the bottom of the saw when you release that, otherwise it's going to jolt out. It's got quite a good spring because obviously a plunge saw, it needs a spring to come plunge. back up to yeah, resist yeah. against you. Yeah. Um, obviously this is just to tighten it up onto your rail and you know if you like it to run freely or if you don't want it to run too freely, these are the little devices for that. Um, what else can we say about the saw? There's a splinter guard here, which you can take out this vision panel there. You can replace it with this splinter guard, which does a couple of things. Obviously, it does what it says on the tin. It guards against splinters. Sorry, I'm in the wrong position to put it in. Again, no, there's another, <laughs> another knob there, which just secures it. But what this is gonna do, when you're on the rail, you can pull that down, right down. And so it's actually sort of, helping you uh, protect the both edges of the cut, the one that's against the rail and then the one that's not against the rail. Also, you know, stop, it's gonna stop you tipping you've got, as well. If you've got something really that you care about, like a veneered door, and you're really worried about that breakout, two things. One, you can scribe two or three mil cut. Yeah. 
Uh, is there a scribe action on this? We never um, actually discovered it, did we? I believe, I believe there is. Um, it's on there, isn't it? That's it, basically. Yeah, you can lock it. You can lock it off. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got a scribe action, but the other thing is, if you're really worried, slide that splinter guard down in position to protect it there as you go through. Yeah. But obviously, that's on the rail. Yeah. Um, because we got the rail giving us that bit of extra hold down. So what's the benefit of having this over a corded one? Well, brilliant if you're on site and you're sort of doing soffit boards, you're running around a scaffolding and you're ripping ply down. It's great because you haven't got the lead trailing, it's safe. Um, you know, it's just really, really, really handy. Obviously- These batteries, you got these on your other festival. Yeah, so this is, you got this these is on the, the, drill, the yeah? same battery as on my drill and all my other sort of kit as well. So, which is quite good. I don't have a, they don't have a a fuel gauge on them, do they? You can't no. tell. So what you've got on this particular device, if I turn it around so you can have a look at it there, obviously when the batteries are fully charged, this will give you an indication of how much power is in the battery. So these will light up. It's not only that, it also tells you if there's a fault or it's overheated by different illuminations in here, different colours. Um, so if you're using it as they show on the tortoise mode, if you're just using, supposing you've got one battery on charge, yeah. and you've got just, you're running on one battery. You want to get on with the job, but you're running on one battery. So the battery that you have to put in is the lower one. Right, it's the bottom one, is it? Not, not the upper one. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, simple Always enough, quite fiddly, that, you know, yeah. you try and press Well, I'm that, glad you're it? finding that. Yeah, it's really it's fiddly. I, I you know, you've got to be Incredible yeah. Hulk. Strong That's finger. actually not strong. as easy as you think, no, is it? Big. Maybe that just needs it's a big. bit of cleaning, sliding. So what does the charger look like? Here's, here, if, in fact, well, of course, there's two little chargers. Yeah, you think it was a twin charger, but it's not, it's two. There's two chargers. That's all right, isn't it? So, it, the, so these chargers, I mean, basically the maths on all chargers is the same. You just look at the wattage of the, the chargers and you work out from the amp hours of the batteries how many. Look at this, who, who knotted this lot? Oh, mate. Who was this? I it wasn't me this well, time. This, uh, somebody's lent us this machine, so... Uh, In, incidentally as well, let's say you've got your workshop, workshop set up. What I do like about these particular chargers is you can hang them on the wall. And so you can just set a little uh, panhead screw up and have them set on the wall. That, that, is, is, that nice. is workshop heaven. That's exactly what the festival's aimed at, isn't it? All those yeah. joiners. It is, yeah. Um, ah, something to mention as well. There's also variable speed. It's in a different position on this saw than it is on the TSC 55 REQ. What's the depth of cut on this machine, Rob? 55 millimeters. It's, it is 55 on that. And that 55? 50, I think it's 55 and 51 on the rail. I was gonna say, the 55 is not on the rail, is it? So wow. in a way, it's a bit of a false promise to people, isn't it? I mean, they're all doing it. They all measure them in that, that self-same way, don't they? They're giving you the depth of cut, the maximum depth of cut off the rail. Yeah. And given the fact it's a track saw, you'd think they would fess up if you like. Yeah, I think, um, I think it's an adequate depth of cut because the most, the most I'll ever cut with this is like an internal door. It might be a fire check door if I'm taking a little bit off the bottom. And they're generally 44 mil thick. And incidentally, when you're doing that with a track saw, even if you've got a really good blade, you don't, certainly don't want to do that in one pass. You want to do that in two or three passes because it's just good practice. Because these saws, you know, they generate a bit of heat if you're using it over and over again. And they do tend to have a safety feature which will stop you over burn, of burning it out, basically. Okay, I'm not a carpenter. Right. I'm going to confess that straight away. You're pretty good, though. Well, you know, I find pretty my good. way around. I've blundered my way around for a few years. Uh, I think what I would do, if I was doing two or three passes, I would clamp that. Yeah, I mean, it's... I think I wouldn't chance it because it's only got to move yeah. absolutely minutely in between each pass and uh, you would find yourself in trouble. The rails it? have this slot have they got, uh, Do they do a quick release clamp? Um, they do a couple of a different types. One. They do a trigger one. I've got a trigger one, which is yeah. like operating a mass nice. uh, silicon gun. You know, you, you slot it in, yeah. which is quite good. Uh, okay, so we're going to take this out. I might yeah. even find some clamps in there. As I say, it's not. I'll tell you what there is in there. A lot of sawdust, mate. Is there? Need we need to, to blow that one out. Vacuum, vacuum, vacuum out. out. Yeah. When we give this back to him, 
We'll give it. A, we'll give it back in a better condition than we got it. How about that, George? We're going to recondition your machine for you. When you get it back, when you get it back, you'll think it's a new machine. I'll tell you what I do like about this particular machine is inside the sustainer, the dusty sustainer. I'll show you here. We have a really nice kind of molded sort of styrene which the chargers fit into and so um, with the other one you kind of you pick the saw up and no matter how many times you do it you try it in both directions yeah. to get it into the little grooves so that's quite that nice. picture's great isn't yeah it? the picture that roger's talking about shows you where everything goes back yeah. so that's brilliant so we're going to take this out and give it a go yeah yep get it some power into those batteries we'll take it take it somewhere where we don't have electricity yeah where would that be on site. So straight away with this Festool, now this isn't a new model, I've got to say that, but that's a good good test really because we're using something that is a little bit older, but the batteries are in very good condition, hardly been used, but we're finding that they're not taking a charge. So the fact they've been sitting in the shed for a while and it's had a bit of cold weather means that these batteries aren't functioning very well. So if I press the button, I can see on the indicator that we're getting We're getting a full one out of one and a one bar out of the other. So in effect, that's given us the 36 volts we need, but there's not a lot of runtime left in them. But th again, this is, this is one of the problems you're going to get when you're using a cordless saw. You know, it, it, it all depends on how good your batteries are. Certainly running on just one battery, that's the 18 volt rather than 36 volt. Running on one battery is absolutely gutless. I mean, it struggled to go through that 18 mil MDF. So I've shoved another battery in, albeit an old battery from the drill, and uh, it's a fully charged battery. So we'll give this a go and see if it's any better. Okay, so that's how it goes through 40 millimeter chipboard. I can't tell you how many meters of that it would run through because it's not actually running on full capacity. So we'd have to have two new batteries to give that a decent runtime test. The breakout is pretty good. I mean, there's hardly anything there, even though I didn't scribe it and I didn't put that external bit down. Both these pieces are actually pretty good as far as not having any breakout goes. So fairly happy with that. What I'm not happy with is the power of this machine. I think it is gutless. I mean, I used it on the 18 volt with just that one battery. I thought I had two fully charged batteries on it. And when I put them on there, I found that one of them was dead flat, even though we've had it on charge for about three hours, it wasn't taking any. And it's not an old battery. So we went and got another battery from another uh, tool. We got one from a drill, an old battery but it seems to be a lot better. And I just think that basically this is the problem you've got with cordless. You're always up against it. You're always worrying about those batteries. Are they good? And I think they've got to be good because even on 36 volts, it struggled. So don't forget, if you're interested in track saws, we've got this big review coming up where we're going to be looking at all the major brands and most popular track saws, and we'll be bringing you that roundup pretty soon. We will.